Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well. So today I will show you how to create this beautiful effect. With this method, you can cut any mesh you want. And what is great is that it's totally procedural inside 2ds Max. You will just have to change the value of the map you use and it will give you a totally different look. You can add extreme detail or decrease them with only one value. And you can of course animate the cutting if you want to create beautiful mesh creation or disintegration. If you want to have the same look than mine, with background, camera, lightning, final render, you can go to my Patreon and download the file. Okay, so firstly I will show you how the displacement from 3ds Max works, because it's an essential step to understand how our final render will look. This method can also produce really cool render like extremely detailed rocks or beautiful organic forms. And after, in the second part, I will show you how to convert a mesh into a BDB file and cut the mesh with procedural map to have a render like mine. Okay, so first I will just create a sphere, but you can of course use the mesh you want. To have a beautiful displacement, we will need a lot of subdivision, so I check that they are to the max. And I will add a turbo smooth modifier with two iterations. Now I'm going to add a displace modifier. And I will change the map to spherical because for this example, I use a sphere. If I play now with the strength of the displace, you can see that it affects our mesh. I can go now to the material editor and create maybe a cellular map and I link this map in instance to the map slot in my displays. And as you can see, the map really affects our mesh. We can now play with the strength to create really different look. We can go back to the map and maybe change the cell setting. Increase or decrease the size to create the look we want. We can play with the iteration setting to add extreme detail or generate a more soft mesh. Here I want a really detailed result. I can play again with the strength. If you want to keep the sphere shape, you can just play with a spread setting like this. It works great for a reveal or disintegration. I will now show you a different result with maybe a noise map. I link this new map. I adjust here my setting like I showed you previously with a cellular to create a look that I like. Perfect. And what is great with the noise is to play with the low and high value to really control the displays. You can with these values generate displacement on small part of your mesh or on the whole sphere. Okay, now I will show you a good thing. We can combine several maps using the composite map. So, map, general, and composite. I put this composite in the map slot of my displays and I link the cellular map to the layer 1. You can if you want to play your mask to the cellular map, air noise, and you can play with the noise high and low value to mask a part of the displays produced by the cellular. You can play with the size, you can add another layer, you can play with the mode to really create different look, play with the percentage, in this example I avoid the soft look of the sphere, of course, you can play with the setting like previously. I can here change my strength. There are infinite possibilities to create unique look. Here you can finally upgrade a little your subdivision if you want really detailed rocks. You can continue to change the setting of your map, play with the strength of your displays, add another layer, or change the mode or the mask. It's really up to you to try by yourself to imagine and create the look you want. If you want to create a really detailed rock surface or a more soft and organic look. Okay, now we have the basics of uh, how the displacements work. I will show you how to really cut a mesh and create a render like I showed in the introduction. So the first thing to do is to import a mesh and convert it into a VDB file. So I will import a skill mesh that I downloaded online, but you can of course import the mesh you want. I just rescale a little my mesh and I move him into the zero axis. Okay, it's good like this, I think. And I will now create a type to setup. Open editor. I zoom in. Go to the VDB tab. And I'm going to create a browse VDB. Okay, now that I have my browse VDB, I can add an object to VDB operator. And I will pick my mesh. Okay, I can now just hide my original mesh. And as you can see, the definition of the mesh is not perfect. 
so I will just decrease the voxel size in the Browse VDB. One seems good to me. I now add the VDB convert because I want to convert this uh, SDF property to density. We see here SDF to density. Perfect. I will now add an export VDB. I go back to the VDB to mesh and I change the input to density. Oof, this cool loses this. <laughs> I can fix that with the ISO value. If I uh, increase the value, it's worth, but if I really decrease the value, I have a perfect VDB mesh based on the density. I can now go to the exports, check that density is well selected, select a path for my VDB file, and finally generate a VDB file. Okay, now that the VDB file is generated, I don't need Typhoon anymore, so I will hide all I don't need. Now I'm going to create my V-Ray Volume Guide. So V-Ray, and here we see V-Ray Volume Guide. I just have to click on my viewport and after select my VDB file generated with Typhoon. Select No Preset, and I can see now my SQL mesh generated with the Volume Guide. What will be important for us is the rendering tab, and we can see that for the volume selected, we have smoke. I cannot just activate my scene setup with my cyclo and my light, and launch a render to see how it looks. Okay, beautiful. It's a really cool way if you want to give to your mesh a fog or smoke look. What is cool is that you can go in the render presets, and you have a lot of options. You can change the color, you can change the opacity. Yeah, not bad. It's an interesting look. I can go back to the smoke and maybe increase the opacity to see what it looks. But anyway, it's interesting, but uh, not what we want to create today. We want a more hard look, so what I'm going to do is go to the mod. And we see that we have a lot of possibility. You can of course try by yourself, but in my opinion, the ISO surface is the best to have a clean mesh. I can now select texture in the surface and launch a render. And we see nothing. <laughs> it's normal because we need a map to affect the texture. So I open my material editor and we see that I have a noise map previously created with the setting I showed you in the first part of this tutorial. I cannot just link this map into the map slot. We can see here the setting and now I'm going to launch a render. And we see that we have a beautiful cutout look with detail in the mesh but it completely fills the cube and we don't see our scroll mesh anymore. So to fix that we will go back to the rendering tab and select cutter geometry. Click on none and go select my original mesh. And if I launch a render again, we can see that this time we have the desired result. I can go to my noise map and uh, maybe decrease the level value to 1 if I don't want detail in the cutout. I can decrease the size 2 if I want to see more my mesh. Maybe increase again another level. Basically, all the things I should do in the first part of the tutorial, like maybe create a composite map and play with the map, smoke, cellular, noise, gradient, or other, it's uh, really as you want. Here, maybe a cellular. Select a mode and launch a quick render to see how it looks. You can, of course, create the material you want to texture your model. For me, here just a simple V-Ray material, but it could be really cool to give to this cool, more realistic marble texture, maybe. Oh, by the way, don't forget to go to your V-Ray setting for your final render and select Bucket. You will have better performance, and if you don't want to render a close-up, you don't need to have a low noise threshold. A value of 0.1 can be enough for a render like this. So it's over for this tutorial, I hope you've learned a lot of things. Don't forget the thumb up and the subscribe if you like my work. 
You can also follow me on Instagram or beyond. And if you want to support me or have access to the sin file, you can go to my Patreon. All the links in description. Take care, guys, and see you soon for our next tutorial. Bye.